Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve remove nth node from end of list, lead code number 19. It's uh, probably one of the easier medium questions I would have to say. So we're given the head of a linked list and we want to remove the nth node from the end of the list and as usual, return the linked list's head. So for example here, we're given the list of one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see down here, n is equal to two. So n equals two means two nodes from the end. So if n equals one, that would be the end, but n equals two is the second node from the end here. That's why it's red here. It basically just means we don't want that node to be in the list. So we want one, two, three, just as it was. We want to skip over that four and just go to the five. Okay, and there might be actually some edge cases here where you have, say for example, just one node. Well, that's just gonna be removing the head. So you'd want to actually return none because you wouldn't have a linked list at that point. And if I were them, I probably would have made another edge case where you had this same list, but n equals two. So that would be removing the head here because that would be the second node from the end is the head. And so you'd actually have to return just two instead because two would have to be your new head as well as the tail. So suppose this is our first example, we're going to play around with it a little bit, and n is equal to 3. So that means you want to remove the 1, 2, third node from the end. So basically you would want this one to just pass by that two and carry on over here. Now, as with some other linked list questions, it can actually be useful to make a dummy node here. So I'm just making a node and calling it D here. Really, it should have some value, like maybe the value of zero, but it doesn't matter. I'm just denoting it as D here. So we'd have D is equal to a dummy node. And that's going to store our head at dummy.next here. And so we're actually gonna make this connection right away. So what we just did here in code is making d a dummy node, a new list node, and then we're setting the dummy node.next equal to the original head because this is actually our head pointer that we're given as well. So this dummy node is gonna help with our edge cases, which we'll cover later. But for now, we'll just deal with this normal case. Okay, and part of our initialization here, we are actually going to get two pointers that are going to point to the dummy node. So we'll get A pointing to the dummy and B pointing to the dummy as well. Now, A is actually short for a head because a head is going to be a head of the behind pointer B here, okay? So right now they're the same, but that's all about to change. The first thing we're going to do is take a head and place it n plus one positions ahead of the dummy. So that is one, two, three, four positions ahead. And as you can see, a head is far ahead of the behind pointer. So that's one loop just to get it over there. We'd run that n plus one times. And then we're going to move ahead and behind at the same time until a head goes out of bounds. So the first iteration, we move A over here. You can see it immediately goes out of bounds and B moves over here at the same time. After A goes out of bounds, which it just did, B is going to be in the perfect position to skip over the node we're desiring to. Okay, it's set up that way, where if you put a head n plus one positions ahead, once it goes out of bounds, you will always be in the position to skip over that desired node. And so when you do that, we just once, we write b.next is equal to b.next.next. Okay, so b.next, its arrow, that is going to point to b.next.next. So that skips that over there. And effectively, you know, with a garbage collector, basically, that node is going to be removed here. And we're just going to have this connection. And that's actually the end here, because all you have to do is return dummy.next. So you can just return dummy.next. You might be wondering, well, why wouldn't we just return head? Well, we'll see that in an edge case right now. So let's back up a bit. Now with this example, and n is equal to three, well, now we're going to remove this node, which is removing the head. And that's where our dummy can be really useful here. So we'll make our dummy node and I'll put it over here. So we'll set up our dummy. We'll point the dummy.next equal to a head pointer, which is pointing here. And then we'd get our ahead and our behind pointing to the dummy. We're going to move ahead n plus one positions ahead. So that will be one, two, three, four positions ahead. Notice that it's immediately out of bounds. And so when you do that, well, we'd set b.next over to be b.next.next. So we take this arrow and set that equal to b.next.next. .next. Okay, that effectively wipes out here, meaning that our original head pointer, that's really just pointing to garbage at this point. And so now our head is still stored at dummy.next here. Okay, so our dummy is really, really useful. Okay, so we're going to make our dummy node, which I'll call 
dummy is equal to a list node. And that is going to set it up with a value by default of zero, a next of none, and that's fine. We are going to set the dummy dot next equal to the head. And we are also going to set behind equal to what a head is, which is all equal to the dummy. So that points both a behind and a head to the dummy. And then we're going to say for underscore, because we don't really need the variable, for underscore in the range of n plus one. So think about how this works here. This is exclusive range. So this actually runs for the indices of zero to n inclusive. Zero to n is n plus one things. So this loop is going to run n plus one times. That is what we want because n plus one times we set a head equal to a head dot next. That is going to move it that n plus one positions ahead. And then we want to do while ahead. So that basically says until this goes out of bounds, we want to move behind and ahead together. So we set behind equal to behind dot next and we set a head equal to a head dot next. Now at that point when a head goes out of bounds, when this closes here, we are going to set behind dot next equal to behind dot next dot next. And don't worry, this is guaranteed to be valid. This code is actually assuming that behind dot next, aka the head at least, is going to exist. And the head will exist. It will be a valid node because we're guaranteed at least one node in the linked list. Okay, so this is always going to be valid. Even if you're just given one node, it's still at least going to point it over to that node's next, which would be none. So this is always going to either skip over that node or it's just going to remove the head if that's what you're doing. Okay, and then at the end, our head is always going to be stored at dummy.next, even for the edge cases. If we run that, that is going to work. Okay, so let's talk about the time and space complexity here. Now, n is actually a parameter, so we can't really just say that n is the length of the linked list like you normally would. Basically, this thing is going to be, we'll call it O of m, where m is the length of the linked list. Now, n definitely has an upper bound of m because you're not gonna say remove the, you know, some node that doesn't exist. You're gonna remove either the last node or the first node or something in the middle. So this part here, that is going to run at most, you know, the length length of the linked list times that'll run at most m times. And then again here, we basically say until we get a head out of bounds. So you can really see this as a head is always going to traverse through the entire list here. That's really what the code is doing is throwing a head through the list and then we're putting behind in the right position. So this whole complexity is definitely going to be O of m where m is the length of the list itself. Okay, and the space complexity also very typical for linked list questions that is going to be O of one or constant space. If you see here, we're really just storing variables. There's nothing big we're storing like an array. Okay, so that's our code. Drop a like if you found it helpful and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.